Um, welcome to the International Markets Track here at Casual Connect. My name's Liz, I'm from UOL Bo Comparin. I'll be your MC this afternoon. Um, with that, I'll go ahead and introduce our first speaker of the day. Um, this is Chalad from Good Game Studios. He is um, the international business development guy and up until January, he spearheaded all of the uh, MENA and Turkey development for Good Game from the ground up. Um, so as we may know, Turkey is a really, really exciting emerging market right now. Um, the internet infrastructure is rapidly improving. It's about 50% right now and there's a lot of room for growth. And on social media, they're second for usage in Europe. Uh, so today, Chaler is gonna be talking about how to uh, garner the most users in uh, MENA and Turkey. So let's give a warm welcome for Chaler. Hi, thank you very much for the kind words and for the nice introduction, Liz. And yeah, as you know, the, uh, the lecture is about unlocking the potential of Turkey and the MENA region. So I would like to start with an overview, an agenda, so what I'm going to talk about. So first of all, I want to introduce my company, Good Game Studios, to you guys. After that, facts about Turkey and online gaming in Turkey and ideas, uh, hints and tips how to optimize um, your performance in Turkey. And the same about MENA and, um, yeah. So, first of all, this is our pool at Good Game Studios. <laughs> uh, Good Game Studios was founded in 2009 from the two brothers, Kai and Christian Wawschinek. And we were developing um, web-based free-to-play games until March 2013, until uh, since then, we are also doing mobile games. So we are strong in free-to-play mobile and web games. We have 180 million registered gamers on our whole games, and 50 percent, uh, 50 million from this 180 million gamers are on our most successful game, um, Good Game Empire. So our company is not investor-driven, it's private health. It makes us more flexible and fast with new decisions for new ideas. So, and we fulfilled our sales um, from 2012 to 2013. So it's, it's a huge number. <laughs> and currently we have more than 650 employees and we are planning to grow to end of 2015 to 1,800 employees. So our HR guys are downstairs at our booth. So if you're interested, and facts about Turkey. So what's going on in Turkey? Turkey has almost 80 million people living in Turkey. And from this 80 million are 36 million online. And as you see, 22 million of this 36 million are playing games. That makes almost 30% of the whole internet population are playing games. So last year, the Turkey market made more than 400 million gross sale on games. So it's a huge market and it's just the beginning. And MMO games and games on social networks are extremely popular amongst Turkish gamers. Grossing 30% of all money is spent uh, in social games in Turkey. So, and um, yeah, beside that, here you can see on this slide Men are more prone. Oops. So, men are more prone to play online games than women, and more than 60% of men who are spending time online are playing. And from this, 60 are almost 80% playing in online games. Among women, it's much more less, and only 30% of the women who are spending time online are playing 30.5% uh, games. From this, 30.5% are only 20% spending money. So it's a big difference between men and women. So the pay payments and um, online games are very popular in Turkey and we have many gamers between 25 and 34. And as you see in this chart, um, these gamers age group is paying in the most, uh, most money in online games. And beside that, they are the biggest group playing online games. So. Just to sum it up, 
It is important to target the right audience, and this is uh, male between the age uh, 34, uh, 40, 24, and 35. So, um, so here you can again see what I said previously. It's the social games and casual, the social platforms and casual websites are very common in Turkey. So many people are playing on social networks, like I said, uh, like before said. Um, from this 36 million internet users, uh, 34 million on Facebook. So Facebook, it's a very big uh, network where you can target the right audience. So there are a lot of gamers. Beside that, uh, casual websites, gaming platforms, and so on. And as you see, a mobile is growing rapidly. So it definitely makes sense if you have a games for mobile, plat uh, for mobile, so you should target the Turkish audience. And um, yeah, online gaming in Turkey and optimization, hints and tips. So does it make sense to adapt your banners or marketing activities to the local market? So actually, it does. So as you can see, we have here Joy Game, Bitcoin, and Gameforge. They did a few things. Like Joy Game, you see there's an Ottoman character on the banner, and this attracts a lot of gamers. So, and beside that, Bitcoin has a sea fight, an Ottoman flagship, which you can buy for extra uh, money. You can buy this uh, ship, and many people are spending money because they want to have an Ottoman flagship in Turkey because Turkish people are very Turkish. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> at Gameforge, they have a tournament in the game, and the you see the Turkish flag is behind the guy who win the tournament. So this is something really important you should uh, take care of. And what what happened to me actually, it was a funny story because um, a partner of mine, he just took our banner and changed it, changed it to the Turkish version he, without asking me, he just did it. And then he wrote instead of empire, he wrote imparator. And what happened? We had 80% more registrations on the game just because of this small change. So, um, yeah. Beside that, I want to say a few words to, to PR work. It's very important in Turkey to give the gamers the feeling that you are not coming to try on the Turkish gamers how your game is performing there. Just make sure that you come to stay and they need to know it because the thing is many gamers, uh, game developers, they just enter the Turkish market and then they showed them uh, that they come to um, deliver them a new content, a new game, but after a while they recognize that the game is not performing that well and then they switch off the um, server, the Turkish server and this is something um, very bad if you spend money in the game and then you want to go on playing it and then of course they give them the option to, uh, to move to an English server, but when you start playing it in Turkish, you don't want to move into an English server. So it's, a, it's something very important. You have to give them the feeling um, that you are not there just to <coughs> collect their money and go out of the uh, market. So this is something, uh, what I want to show you, what we did actually with our trailer. We just um, lo localized also our trailer to show them and give them the feeling that we want, uh, we, want to, we want to stay in the Turkish market. So I just want to show you our trailer. Give me a second. So it's actually, it, it makes really sense to even make the voice over because many uh, game developers, they have a trailer, but they just use uh, subtitles, the English version, and that's it. So even not the, not the Turkish version, but this is something, when you show this, it's, it's really not that expensive, by the way. And if you show this to your audience, they will really have another feeling to the game. So this is something also very important. And who are the key publishers in Turkey? Just <coughs> Just to uh, name a few, it's MyNet and JoyGame, they are the biggest in Turkey. So it really make, makes sense to talk to these publishers. 
and yeah, payment methods, very important. Um, more than between 30 and 40 percent of the gamers are using mobile payments, so it's very important to um, to have the Turkish to give them to give the Turkish gamers the option to use mobile payments. And then ePins. I don't know if you guys know what ePins are. It's electronic pins. It's it's very common in Turkey because not only uh, many people are playing games in internet cafes, so it's it's something traditional in Turkey. So, if someone wants to spend money or buy in game, make an in-game purchase, they can go in the internet cafe to the owner or to the guy who's working there and ask for ePIN, and then he will get a uh, code which he, he pays directly there in cash, and he gets a code which he can use in the payment shop. So this is very common in Turkey. So I can tell you by experience, don't make the mistake to work with a lot of ePIN distributors because they will really not uh, focus on your game because it's, uh, yeah, they are laughing because here we have Game Buy. <laughs> they are ePIN distributor, a partner of us. And um, yeah, it's really like that. You, you need to work with one ePIN distributor and then you need to make an plan what to do and, and and then they will take care of it so but if you work with a lot they will all say I will not take care because if I will make promotion they will have the benefit so that's why it's, it makes sense to work with the one so and yeah again to EPEN most important cities for EPEN distribution are these um, cities because they are the biggest cities in Turkey and um, yeah what are what kind of promotions can the ePIN distributor do for you? They can make events in internet cafes to engage the users to the game, to make promotion. Then they, they rent a few uh, tables, a few PCs, and then they show the gamers uh, how to play the game. So, and engage them to buy in-game uh, in uh, in stuff. So, um, yeah, a very important point. So, facts about the MENA region. In the MENA region, we have 30, uh, 350 million people. The internet penetration is uh, 90 million. And online gamers are not that huge like in Turkey, but still a lot of people and a lot of whales. So, 88% uh, have access to the internet from home and 54% from work. So, um, yeah. Uh, the internet population is 50 million, as you see, and um, yeah, online gaming in the Middle East. Here we see again the internet penetration. The internet penetration is in the GCC countries higher than in the North African countries, and the GCC countries are very important because there you have the whales. So keep that in mind. And in 2013. The gross sale through um, games were 107 million, and for 2015, they're expecting um, 400, over 400 million. Why, are, why is it so growing? The thing is that many game developers didn't uh, went to the MENA region with their games because, I don't know, maybe they thought it's not worth, but nowadays, a lot of companies are going there, like um, World of War Tanks, War, uh, war gaming, then um, Sony is going there, EA, and of course Good Game Studios are also there. So in the past it was only Travian, so now it's getting bigger and people are used to play games. So, yeah, as you see, Middle East and Africa has only 45 um, minutes spending daily, uh, average daily time on the internet, but the thing is, there we see a huge potential. Uh, huge growth will come in the future. So it really makes sense to start now. And um, yeah, about payment methods in the MENA region. Mobile, again, like in Turkey, it's the number one paying, uh, paying um, system, payment system, and prepaid cards, like in Turkey. It's like ePIN and prepaid cards is almost the same. It's not a big deal between this. And um, bank cards are like uh, credit cards are also important. 
And on the credit cards, I can tell you it makes sense to use a local credit card. So not the one we know, just focus and see what are common in the region and then use these because it's, it's very important, I can tell by experience again. And yeah, most important payment methods, if you work with Cashew and one card, then you, have, uh, you cover the whole region. Or you can also work like we are doing it with um, Gate to Play. They are a payment aggregator. They have every payment method, so it's very easy to switch on and switch off. So, yeah. That's it, actually. So fast and dirty. <laughs> Thanks. Any questions? <laughs> Would you compare Turkey to some of the other emerging markets that are big right now, like Latin America and some of the others? Like, what what makes it really stand out in your opinion? Actually, the thing is, like, it's really not a big difference between the Latin market, the emerging markets in uh, like Brazil or Turkey. It's almost the same. There's the same potential, a huge country, and a lot of people. Uh, and looking for games. I mean, it's, yeah, the thing is, a lot of companies didn't uh, start uh, focusing on those countries, but nowadays they are because they see the potential. So in the past, there was a less um, internet penetration in, in those countries, but nowadays it's growing and so, it's, yeah, it's, there's less or almost no difference. I um, uh, actually came from Beirut, uh, where we have a startup hub in, in Beirut that's focusing partially on games, and we have three of the games in the indie showcase. Only one of them in Arabic, though, and I was curious about the, the language issues here. Um, are, do you see much uh, emphasis in terms of are people playing games throughout the region in, in Arabic, in Turkish? Are they open to English games? Are they, um, uh, what, do you, what is your sense on that? Um, actually, the thing is, of course, they do play in English if you offer them the English version. But I can tell you, you will not reach uh, not that much gamers if you have your game in Arabic. And it's also important, by the way, maybe I forget to say it, uh, that you should have a community management in, in Arabic to, in the local language too. So because you, you want to give them a feeling like you came to, to do them a favor and, and bring them your game. Otherwise, it looks like you came to collect the money. So this is not something you should um, yeah, do. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was curious about what you're seeing in terms of the game, the game dev markets in those countries going from there out to the rest of the world or versus developers from the rest of the world working to develop for these markets. Um, uh, are you seeing it going both ways, or do you work with development communities in Turkey and MENA and uh, reaching a global audience, or are you focusing mostly on the, th those regions as markets for game users? No, we are targeting the whole world, and when we see that it makes sense, we see there's a growth, it makes sense, and then we go to the market and publish our games by ourselves there. Yeah, so it's not just just one focus on the on emerging markets, it's not it's not our um, strategy. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi, is there any local uh, cultural restriction in MENA? No, there's no. Actually, no. Hi. Um, I was just wondering if you could share with us um, your thoughts on uh, revenue streams within your games. So paid versus free versus display, running videos, uh, in-app purchases and things like that. Sorry, I didn't get it once again. <laughs> just wondering about your various revenue streams. Yeah. 
So paid versus free, in-app purchases, running ads. What's your, what's so your general thoughts on those? We are working with in-app purchase. It's a free-to-play. It's an in-app purchase game. So I can not say how it is, if it will be different. So free-to-play is very common in Turkey especially. So actually, I have no idea how the other games are, or if the other revenue um, streams are better or not. And, and so if you're doing uh, free to play, mm -hmm. um, what, what, how, how do you generate uh, revenue then? In-app purchases. It's all in-app Yes, yes, yes. So there's no uh, additional advertising? No advertisements in the game, nothing. No more other questions? Thanks.